Hello again, and thank you for allowing us to connect with you again this week. For you that were able to be a part of our parking lot service, it was a tremendous success. And so, just want to say a special thank you to all of our staff and volunteers that were helping in the parking lot, helping us park cars, passing out newsletters, Mother's Day gifts, uh, children's church material. It, it's just an absolutely awesome uh, team effort. And so to our praise team that arrived early to set up musical instruments and mics and music stands. And I, I tell you, the praise and worship was absolutely wonderful. And so thanks to the Busby family for providing us a trailer. So and a very special thank you to our media team, which for nine weeks now has been bringing this service to you by broadcast. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much. We, we are uh, working diligently to provide options to be available at our services uh, during this time of stay in place. And for our parking lot option like we had Sunday, we need to have the weather to cooperate with us. But for you that are wanting to attend services, I'm excited for you. I'm excited you want to be here. And so we're working on options to make that possible. So I, I just want to encourage you, watch for our announcements on Facebook and, and our website so that we'll be able to let you know the options that are available. Seem like they're almost changing day by day. But the thing that I want you to know is that we're committed to staying connected to you, whatever your status is. A few years ago, there was a theme for our school systems that was no child left behind. I just want to assure you that we're going to make uh, our very best effort to make sure no one gets left out, no one gets left behind. If you're not physically able to get out during this time, or maybe you're just not comfortable getting out during this time we want to continue to make uh, options available to you where you can be a part of the service and our media team uh, is helping us to do that so every person is very important we don't want anyone to feel like you've been left out or left behind during this season of crisis that we're in uh, some governors have recognized churches as being essential. Others have just felt like that the church is not essential and they'll open them up or they'll allow people to uh, participate in religious things somewhere down the third or fourth phase, down somewhere down in the future. But here in Texas and Oklahoma, both of our states have been recognized in the church as being essential. And, and the last uh, few days since Sunday, uh, the words daily bread has just kept going over and over in my spirit. For almost everyone, you would recognize those two words from the Lord's Prayer where Jesus taught us how to pray. Matthew chapter 6 and 11, He said, Give us this day our daily bread. Now, I'm not a Greek scholar, but I, I, I've read that the original word is artuus, which if fully translated means essential bread. What we receive from the Word of God, what we receive spiritually from our time in God's presence is essential. Whether any governor chooses to recognize it, whether they ever make the statement, whatever state you're in, we realize that it's essential that we receive spiritual nourishment, that we receive that spiritual bread. And so I, I believe that you're listening to this broadcast to the, tonight because you realize the need for spiritual bread is just as great as the need for physical bread. If you're going to be able to keep going and be active, you have to take time to eat. Some folks, I, I hear about them, they get so busy, they just forgot to eat. Now some of you, you don't ever forget to eat. That's the first thing you plan in the morning is what I'm going to eat three times today. But you realize anyone, no one can keep going. No one can be str uh, strong and vibrant unless they take time for bread. And so when we realize that we need that bread, that like the word artos that, that is in the original Greek, 
essential bread. Give us this day our essential bread. So whether the governors recognize churches as being essential, it's not about the building that's essential. We can do without the buildings. We've already seen that. Nine weeks, we haven't been in a building. But what is essential? It's the daily bread. It's the Word of God that is essential. Notice in Matthew 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 4, he said it's written, Jesus is actually speaking back to Satan because of his temptation of saying, turn the stones into bread. Uh, Satan's want Jesus to be distracted by the natural bread. And he said it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So it's the words of God that are essential meals that we have to eat every day. We need that. It's so important during this national crisis that we, and actually it's a global crisis, that we feed our faith and not feed our fear. There's plenty of sources around right now to feed your fear. And I feel, I, I, I feel like a lot of people are feeding your fear. You're, you're, you're watching all of the news media hours at a time and forgetting to feed your faith. Come on, you need to feed your faith. Feed your faith and not feed your fears all the time. And so how do you feed your faith? It only comes by hearing the Word of God. That's the reason why we're bringing daily bread. That's the reason it's so important. You, you can listen to people talk two minutes and tell whether they're feeding their faith or feeding their fear. I want people, when they hear me speak, they realize his faith is strong. We're feeding our faith. So I want to leave three important principles with you on this Wednesday night about receiving daily bread. Notice in John chapter 6, Jesus continually talks about bread, the importance of bread. And in verse 35, he says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Jesus is answering the people that had been following him because of the loaves and the fishes. I, I shared a little bit about this Sunday morning when we were talking about the desperate mother that came to Jesus. But they had been following Jesus, the crowds, thousands, thousands of people. Why were they following him? Because he would feed them loaves and fishes. And their idea, this is wonderful. We won't have to work anymore. We won't have to raise crops or farm anymore. We're just going to follow Jesus around. And he's, he's going to feed us at, and uh, the, the, just uh, uh, the same way, Jesus, you feed us the same way that Moses fed our ancestors for 40 years. And Jesus began to share with them, it's not about the loaves and fishes. He said, you're following me just for the loaves and the fishes, but you need to seek me because I am the bread of life. And now that's what we're talking about in verse 35. He says, I'm a bread of life. I'm not just something to nourish your bodies for one time. And, and you, Jesus wanted to emphasize that so much. We talked about this Sunday. He finally pulled away from the crowds and went to Tyre and Sidon because he didn't want the people thinking his reason for coming was just to feed their natural hunger. He said that those that believe in me will never hunger. Those that believe in me will never be thirsty. Notice John chapter 6, 51. He says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven, that one may eat it and not die. If anyone eats the bread, he will live forever. We're talking about things that will cause us to have eternal life. That's how essential it is. It is essential bread that our faith be built. And, uh, but when, when they, gee, the, the people, they could only talk about the natural bread. And Jesus began to go back and forth. And talk about, he said that Moses fed your ancestors with bread, but they died. But he said, if you see me as the bread of life, if you eat my flesh, and this is where thousands quit following him, they were offended by a statement, you need the daily bread. If you eat my flesh, you'll never die. You, you'll know eternal life. So he begins to compare to him, the, him being the bread of life and the bread that they ate in the wilderness. But I want to make a, a comparison. As I said a moment ago, I'll leave three principles with you about the bread that was in the wilderness. Principle number one, for them to get the bread that's in the wilderness, they had to go and gather the bread. 
the bread would fall every morning. And early in the morning at daylight, they would see the bread on the ground. But notice, they had to go out and get it. They had to gather it. There's no generation in history that has more access to the bread of life, the Word of God, than our generation. It's accessible 24 hours a day. Uh, this means that, that that's, that's the reason we're making this broadcast available. Uh, but everyone has to be responsible to go out and gather the bread. I'm serving fresh bread this evening, but you have to make an effort to tune in to the broadcast. And if you're technology challenge like I am, sometimes it's an effort for me to try to gather bread in. People say, you need to listen to this message, you need to listen to that one. Well, I've got to make the time, I've got to make the effort. The bread is available. Living bread is all around us to build our faith up, but it's the thing of getting people to say, I, I believe I need that bread enough, I believe I need that word enough to build my faith. We have to individually make sure we go out and get that bread, that living bread, daily bread. It's available, but we have to do it. But I will tell you, I believe it's worth the effort. Whatever we have to do to gather the bread of life, to feed our faith. The second principle I want to leave with you this evening is the bread that they had in the wilderness only lasted for one day. Now, when you read this verse, it, it almost seems re redundant how Jesus said Give us today our daily bread. It seemed like Jesus would just say, give us bread today. But notice, I want you to get this. Now listen very closely, listen to this. Today, when he says, give us today our daily bread, give us today. Today is referring to when. Daily is referring to the amount. So what, it, what he's saying, we need bread for today. And the reason why the, day, the bread only lasted one day at a time is because God wants us to stay in relationship with Him. Daily connection with Him to have the bread of life. So it's not like you went to, child, uh, went to school as, or went to church as a child. I've heard people say this, well, I went to church all my time as a childhood. I've done got my time in. No, you need daily bread. Every day. It doesn't make any difference what you were doing a year ago or 10 years ago. You need daily fellowship, daily connection with God today. This, the bread lasts for today. Many uh, years ago, there was a popular song, One Day at a Time. Lord, help me today. Show me the way. One day at a time. I'll tell you, God has a fresh word for you today to fight your fears, to meet the challenges, to deal with the difficulties that you're going through today. But you need to hear from God today. It's not what someone prophesied over you in 1999 or whatever. That, that's yesterday. It's gone. I want today. Lord, show me your way today. So the bread, give us today our daily bread. We, we live in a world that's full of, of uncertainties we don't know what's going to happen next year next month or even next day I, I i listened to the news about five minutes today and they were talking about school's not going to be able to start back in september making all kinds of predictions that nothing's going to start back up it's going to be 2022 before we ever get back all of the stuff that's out there it's so uncertain come on come back to the word of god let god build your faith for today we're looking to God to sustain us today I know one thing he's keeping me today he's in charge today and I have no fear today because I'm living in faith I've received daily bread for today it's so important that we realize that God wants us to depend on him every day one day at a time I was thinking last night about a, a situation that happened my uncle uh, a pastor to church my dad was a pastor my uncle was pastor all my family my, my father-in-law my brother-in-laws so I come from a whole family of pastors but my uncle pastored a church up in Oklahoma way years ago when he first started being a pastor he was I remember him telling the family about a man that was in his church that just got saved he didn't know anything about God the Bible or church but he came to him one day and he said, Brother Sellers, 
I found out something. I want to tell you about this. I, I was noticing we buy groceries every Friday and we bring them all in and put them on the table. And this idea come to me that we can just bless our food, bless all these groceries that are on the table, and then there won't be any need for us to always be praying over, over our food three Three days, three, three meals every time we pray over this food. We're just going to pray over it once. And I wonder how many times we don't realize there's a reason that every meal we say, Thank you, God, for this meal. You're our provider. Thank you for this drink of water. Thank you, Lord, that I have this nourishment. We just continually need that connection with God. It's not a deal of saying, Well, I thanked God for the car uh, when I bought it five years ago. Now it, that's. No, come on, every day, Lord, you are my provider. Daily, daily bread, daily provision. Thank you for what you've done daily, daily. You know, if we look ahead and try to figure out how it's going to happen, we never see it happen. I, I, I think of my life here, uh, very unusual, very few pastors have been in one church as long as I have in, in, in I have easily preached over 6,000 messages to one congregation. You would have told me in 1976 that I was going to have to come up with 6,000 messages. It would have seemed impossible to me. But you know what? I could barely wait to share you this message with you about daily bread. It's a brand new message. I could hardly wait to see what I'm going to say to that. Because that's how fresh daily bread is. That's how fresh the Word of God is. And so God gives us enough bread for one day. Uh, there'll be bread for tomorrow, but we need to trust God because the tomorrow will then be today, and we trust God for that. So third principle I want to leave with you. God is our ultimate provider. He's the only one that can sustain us. He sustains our lives Every day, one of the most traumatic experiences that I think we could ever face in life is the loss of a job. And I realize there may be people right now listening to me that maybe your employment status may, may be a shakier. Your job may all, have already been eliminated. We're looking at the highest unemployment, according to the news, since the Great Depression. That's 80 years ago. But I want, I want you to realize something our Heavenly Father, He wants us to depend on Him for every need. He's saying, just look to our Heavenly Father. He said, the birds. He feeds the birds. He, he clothes the fields uh, with, with beautiful flowers. He, he takes care of us. Don't worry about tomorrow. Look to Him. Seek first the kingdom of God. His righteousness, all the other things will just get added to us. Believe Him today for our daily Bread. He wants to sustain us today. And, and so as, as we, we begin to realize that, that our generation in many ways, we're not a lot different than the generation 2,000 years ago. People sometimes, they only seek God for the material things, for the fish and the loaves. They don't realize that the essential bread is that spiritual bread, just that fellowship just that connection with God. I, I, I want to realize how important that is. I never want to lose my hunger for the bread of heaven. There's a chorus that we sing in the last few years said, it's the air I breathe. It, he's the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me, I'm desperate for you. I'm lost without you. Do you feel that way? I'm desperate for you, Lord. I'm lost without you. You are my daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Three principles that I'm leaving with you. If you want daily bread, you're going to have to get up and get it. Some folks just being too lazy and you're letting fear overwhelm you. There's daily bread. It's available. Get up and get it. And remember, it's only going to last for one day. You, you, can't, you can't listen to a message once a week or once a month 
and then wonder why you're overwhelmed with fear when you've been listening to uh, 24 hours a day to, to news media that's scaring you to death. Come on, get up and get it. And then the third thing is remember God is our source. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. He's a good heavenly Father. Give us this day our daily bread. I want you to pray with me today. Would you do that? I pray, Lord, that Trinity Lighthouse would always be a Bethlehem. Bethlehem means a house of bread. I pray that no one would ever come to Trinity Lighthouse or listen to a broadcast and say, I came so hungry, but the oven was empty. There was no fresh bread. I just pray that we'll always be able to provide fresh bread, bread from heaven. Lord, and I, I pray for, that you would be a provider of that daily bread. Lord, for, for people that maybe have lost jobs or they're wondering if their job is going to continue to last or they're going to be seen as an essential worker. Lord, I think we're all essential. We're all important with what you've called us to do. And I, I just pray that we would see you as Jehovah Jireh. You are my provider. The job is just, just an avenue where it comes in. It's just a channel. But God, you are my, my, my source. You are my source. I'm looking to you today to just be my daily bread. Lord, I just pray you will just keep all of us calm. Help us keep carrying on with the responsibilities, with all the things around us that would shake us and cause us to fear and, and so dread the future. Lord, keep us calm. Let us just carry on with what you've called us to do. Thank you, Lord, for supernatural grace and wisdom. Lord, to lead your people. Lord, to do what you've called us to do. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. We miss seeing you. We look forward, though, to giving you an opportunity to be able to see us in person soon. So be watching Facebook. Be watching our website for an announcement. God bless you. We love you.